Hey, hello, how you doing? My name is Sejovani and today is day eight of my Beyonce Renaissance inspired fashion project. Today I will be making the hat, which is another thing that's completely out of my comfort zone, but I freaking, I'm excited because my mama, my mama loves big hats. <laughs> like she always is goo goo gaga drooling over a really, really big wide brim hat. And so I am excited to make it so that I can make a ton for my mom. We have to figure out how to store it because that the way the hat came out is really big and I have no idea where it's gonna go once I like take photos of this look. So that's the only problem. But other than that, yeah, I had to learn how to do this for my mama. So um, I love how this hat came out and I also got to, uh, you know, use some of the waste I got from making the rest of the items in the project to put it into the hat so it's you know it lessens the waste of the project which is always really 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 good so um yeah all the materials will be linked down below in the description box and in the comments and also join my patreon for extra perks and extra behind the scenes stuff and extra tutorials and all of that good stuff um and that's pretty much it so anyway if you'd like to see how i made this hat for my beyonce renaissance inspired uh, fashion project, then please keep on watching until the end of this video. All right, so I'm using this poster board. I believe it's like 24 inches wide by either 48 or 60 inches like long. I'm going to be using this poster board for the brim of the hat. So what I'm going to do first, I measured out how wide I wanted the brim to be from my hat extending outwards but I realized the shit was too <laughs> big um, and I couldn't fit it on the poster board so I just used a um, diameter of 24 inches for the hat and so that's what I'm measuring out on the poster board right now so what I first did is like I think I believe I kind of made a cross on the poster board and then use that center point of the like the, the, the intersection of the cross to then create like a little circle I tried to do like the two pencils with the string of the length of how long you wanted the you know circle to be or the radius of the circle to be that shit didn't work so I just had to measure out 12 inches from the center point just around in a circle instead and that worked a lot better so anyway I'm just going to do that real quick and I'll come back to tell you the next step So then now what I'm doing is from the intersection, I'm measuring out about three inches out from that like midpoint, middle point, um, because that will be where I'm going to fit my head through. So that's going to be the inner circle for the brim um, where like the top hat part would go. <laughs> um, I'm sorry any, if anybody knows millinery and I am so sorry because I don't know none of the right terms like at all. <laughs> like I'm so sorry but anyway so I'm just gonna do that real quick to get my inner circle together for the brim of the hat and then I'll cut everything out and I'm sorry that my head is like literally in the way for the majority of <laughs> this process so I apologize in advance and also I apologize right now so what I'm going to do is cut everything out I first use like a scissor and like opened it and used that one of the blades to cut around it but it was just way easier just to use an exacto knife and i didn't realize that until the next day <laughs> so bear with me So this is what it looks like when everything is cut out um, and I did go and try it on in the mirror and realize that this shit is way too big. <laughs> it's way too big. I wanted a big hat but this was like ginormous and I didn't realize how big it was going to be. So I took some time to um, trim the hat down from 24 inches pretty much to 20. I went around and took off about two, two, two and a half inches off of the brim at first and then I went back and took off like another inch so it's pretty much like 21 to 20 inches um in diameter by this time uh after I cut out everything so you'll see me just kind of resize the hat and this is when I realized that oh an exacto knife works a lot better <laughs> 
<laughs> but I'll just do that real quick and then I'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I completely resized the hat. It's not like the perfect circle, but it's perfect enough. And plus no one will notice when it's like on my head. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to smooth out the inner circle cause it was just looking a little raggedy from cutting it. And so I try to use like a buffer, like a nail buffer in order to do it. And it worked a little bit, but then I was like, oh, let me just use an X-Acto knife. So I did that as well. So pretty much I use an X-Acto knife for like everything. But anyway, so after I do that, I'm going to be working on the top hat for the hat part, right? The top hat part of the hat. All right, so what I'll be using for the top hat part of the hat is this EVA foam that's typically used for cosplay. I'll put like how thick it is. I think it's like a five millimeter, six millimeter thickness. Um, but I'm going to be using that as for the top hat of the um, hat part, right? Y'all know what I mean, the little cap part that goes on top of the hat. But anyway, I'm measuring the circumference of the inner circle of the brim of the hat. And that's going to be the length of the um, foam that I'm going to cut out. I think I added like an inch or a half an inch because I'm planning to cut it down to size over time. So I'm just measuring it out. I think it was actually like exactly 24 inches, which is hilarious. So anyway, I'm measuring that 24 inches in two different places just to make sure that it is a straight line once I cut it. Now that I've cut the foam to size, I'm going to take it and curve it into a circle <laughs> and pretty much fit it into the brim, the inner circle of the brim of the hat and kind of figure out what size I need it for. Cause it's good to measure the circumference, but you just don't know if it's a completely accurate size. So this is a better way to figure out if it's an accurate size or not. And so I'll cut off a little bit of the excess that I have. I think I cut off like an inch or two off of the excess. I left a little of the excess on because I just wanted to make sure that I didn't cut too much of the foam and then it be like, and then I have to like figure out how to piece it back together. So. Here I'm just marking where I need to cut and I'll go and cut that. So here after I cut it, I'm just gonna take the foam, um, again, roll it into a circle and just check to see if that works for me. And it was good enough. It was good enough. So now I'm gonna take this to my craft room. Ta-da, here we go. I'm sorry for the lighting. Um, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out with my new setup. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is take my hot glue gun and pretty much inch my way around the circumference of the inner brim and glue the foam to the inner brim. And so I'm just going to like glue it and then hold it there for a few seconds and then go a little bit more around the circle and repeat the process. And also what I realized later uh, is that it helps to use a um, blow dryer to quickly dry the glue more. Um, <laughs> I wish I knew about that sooner, but I know now. And so I use that as well, just to try to quickly dry the glue because to hold it for like three minutes until it's completely dry is literally ridiculous. So this is what it looks like once everything is glued together. And yes, I have a little bit of excess um, peeping through the other side of the inner circle of the brim, um, just to make sure again that enough is glued down. So I'm just gonna cut off that excess off of the, you know, you know, off of the hat. And then I'm just going to go around and kind of like reseal the hot glue. I'm just gonna glue around the circle again and kind of like reseal the glue and just really make sure that it's like on there like that. I'm almost using like hot glue, like caulking if you're used to like fixing stuff or doing any like home repairs or anything like that. That's kind of what I'm using the hot glue for. But I think I do that later. But right now I kind of measured about, I think two or three inches. I think it's more like three inches up from the bottom of the brim uh, onto the top hat part and uh, I'm just marking it all around the circumference of the foam. And that's where I'm just gonna cut um, because I don't need the top hat to be that tall. <laughs> At least not for this look, who knows for another look, but this one, absolutely not. So I'm just marking it and then I'll just cut it. I'm just, I use regular scissors for this. And again, I am so sorry for the uh, lack of lighting for this, <laughs> but you get the vibe, you get the vibe. 
All right, ta-da, there you go. And you see there's a little bit of overlap with the foam, so I'm just gonna take my hot glue and I'm just gonna glue that up just to make sure that um, everything is closed and very secure. So right here, I'm just gluing up that seam of the excess foam real quick. I'm just gonna um, dry that down just to kind of complete the little at least brim or rim of the top hat situation. I am taking a piece of wax paper because it's pretty much like tracing paper anyway and I'll be using a marker. <laughs> and I place it on top of the top hat where the open, obviously open circle is. And I am going to trace the pretty much open circle with a Sharpie to see what, um, pretty much to act as a pattern for the top of the top hat so I can cut it out of foam. Um, this just makes it way easier than just to cut a circle that you think is big enough and then cut it down to size. So then after I trace it, I'm going to cut that circle out. I'm going to place it onto some, oh, actually I'm not using foam. I'm using the poster board that I have left because I had just enough for it. I'm going to trace it onto that poster board and cut it out and I'm going to glue it on top of the top hat. But before I do that, I figured while I'm doing that, this can go ahead and dry on its own. I'm just using the hot glue again as caulk, um, just to make sure that all the see the the like the everything's sealed pretty much to make sure that everything's secure. Um, so I do that real quick, and then now you see me tracing the um, the pattern for the top hat out of the poster board, and I'm gonna cut it out and glue it to the top of the poster board, or I would glue it to the top of the top hat to finish the structure of the hat in general. Okay, so here, um, I just added like a half an inch of space, just to make sure, again, you don't wanna cut it too small, uh, cause that's literally the worst. So um, that's it all cut out, and again, here I'm just gluing it all down. And I'm just going to go all around the circumference of the top hat just all in one go um, because I want to glue it down all at once instead of doing it piece by piece because that would just be a lot more complicated. But you have to move quickly because you don't want the glue to dry. And I'm just going to hold it there for like a minute or two. And then I'm going to use the hot glue as caulk again and go around the seam of where I glued the top of the top hat onto the top of the top hat. <laughs> Glue the top to the top of the hat. Um, and as you see here, I'm just doing that just to make sure just it's all sealed up and it's all secure. Cause like, I just had a really big fear of it all falling apart because I never made a hat before. So, and like, I couldn't find like a lot of tutorials on hat making for this big of a size. Um, so I just really secured everything down just to make sure that everything was what it was supposed to be. But anyway, that's what it looks like once I'm done with the structure of the hat pretty much. Uh, and it looks great. I could have left it like this. Um, you know, maybe just did a paint job and called it a day, but, um, no, we got more stuff to do because this is a Beyonce Renaissance project. It has to be very, very extra. So anyway, now I'm moving on to really adorning the hat and you know making it what you see in the thumbnail. So what I first have to do, I'm doing like a paper mache style, um, you know, technique to secure the hat's integrity because it was poster board. The poster board, does, like it bends relatively easily, not like a lot, but if you put some pressure, it could bend, you know. And I didn't want again the hat to fall apart so what i'm doing is paper macheing the brim specifically just so that it can hold up um to its weight and, and to you know a little bit of rough and toughness because i will be using this for a photo shoot so what i'm doing is i'm using mod podge or mod podge um gluing it or placing the glue onto the brim and then i'm gonna place some scrap pieces of paper on to the mod podge part the glue part and then i'm going to place the mod podge on top of it now i tried to do regular mod podge for the top of the hat but um or like going on top of the paper but then i realized that like it was just a little bit too much resistance when doing so so i added some water to it great idea and horrible idea great idea um because it did make it a lot easier and make the papers like mend together but horrible idea because um it did make the hat bend 
and warp its shape it wasn't like the straight hat anymore so it, I, it was mixed feelings mixed emotions but anyway i'm just gonna do that for the rest of the hat i'm going to put the mod podge down first the regular mod podge without water then i'm going to put the paper on top of it on top of the mod podge on top of the glue and then i'm going to put mod podge with water on top of it and i don't add a lot of water i think it's like at most 50 50 um but at minimum like 25 75 um with the 75 being the mod podge so anyway and it doesn't matter which type of mod podge you use as long as it's for paper um so yeah i'm just gonna do that all around the hat uh, and I do it twice. I do two rounds of it as well, which I think really led to it warping <laughs> because of all the water I had to put on top of it. Um, so you can also probably, because I want to try it, like do some like waterproof vinyl um, spray and maybe spray it, spray the hat down with that first and then do the paper mache part. And that might have stop the warping a little bit and you'll probably do it have to do it for the top and the bottom so i might redo this hat again in just like a different style i have to make some for my mom anyway because she loves wide brim hats so um i'll probably try that method and then let y'all know if it works uh with to, to like stop it from like warping and all that stuff so anyway um i'll see y'all when I'm done doing all the paper mache and stuff like that. Um, and we'll move on to the next step, which is a lot more fun than this. <laughs> Alright, so this is what the hat looks like once I'm done doing two rounds of paper mache um, and I let it dry for about like 12, at least 12 hours. 24 is most appropriate. I don't remember how much time I left, but at least 12 hours. And this is what it looks like once it's all dry. Yes, it's giving very much yeehaw. <laughs> it's giving very much, you know, like it, it's giving very much you know texas toast and that's fine but that was not what i was looking for and i knew it was because of all the water um so but it does correct itself over time so what had happened now is i am um going around the edge of the hat and just cutting off all the excess paper that i had because i didn't like go like exactly to like the edge of the hat i kind of had some leftover hanging off pieces so i'm just cutting that off first Okay, so now that that's done, I am going to paint the entire hat red. Um, I'll put the paint that I'm using in the screen and also obviously down below. Um, but I'm using a red paint and it's like the cheap, I think it's the craft art paint from Michaels, like the cheap, cheap one. And I'm, I mixed it with a little bit of Mod Podge so I don't have to like refinish it because um, I don't want to put more liquid than necessary because of how much the hat warped. Um, yeah, I just didn't want to risk it anymore. So I mixed it together for two reasons. Reason number one, I didn't want the paint to chip. And reason number two, again, it's, it's just to finish it all in one go. And I only did one layer because again, I just didn't want the hat to warp even more than what it was already doing. I'm painting it red so that because I'm going to do like a collage style kind of technique onto the hat of some materials that I have so I didn't want like white spaces to pop through because I would mess up the color palette so I was like let me just paint it red so I don't have the stress of having to cover every square inch of the hat So yes, I painted both the top and the bottom of the hat and this is what it looks like once I'm done painting it. And so now it's time to move on to actually gluing the items onto the hat. So what I'll be using for the hat, which I thought of as I was making this project, is that I'm using the scraps 
of fabric from the project. I was like, oh, that's just perfect. Let me just do that because it minimizes waste. And then it also follows a color combination because I had one idea for the project and it just wasn't, <laughs> it, I just didn't think it would like work well. So I kind of pivoted to doing this and it works a lot better and it looks a lot better. So what I'm doing now is that I'm taking this, I think two and a half inch wide red satin ribbon and I'm going to glue it around the edge of the hat in order to um, make sure that the edges are covered and they, they look finished because that was like one of my biggest concerns is that just because I had to paint it red and also I just wanted like a like a clean edge is that I figured like this will solve that issue so what I'm doing um, is gluing half of the ribbon onto the top and obviously half of the ribbon onto the bottom and sandwiching the edge of the hat in between the ribbon just so that it looks nice and clean and just pristine so um, I'm just using hot glue again. I, I pretty much use hot glue for the rest of this video <laughs> because it just works the best. So you'll just see me go around the edge of the brim of the hat and just hot glue the ribbon onto the edge of the hat. So I first um, glue the top of the hat first and then I flip over and then glue the bottom uh, just to make it easier. So here I finished gluing the ribbon all around the hat and this is what it looks like. Also, yes, I did leave the white space of the top hat alone. Mistake. I should have painted it. I ended up painting it later. So, <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, I don't know why I did that. But anyway, um, so now I'm just going to flip this hat over back to its, you know, top side and then I'm going to glue all the fabric pieces onto the top of the hat and also the bottom too but I'm going to start at the top so I first tried to use I believe um tacky glue or mod podge but I think it was tacky glue um for the hat and pinning and gluing all the pieces together because I was living my collage fantasy how comma ever did not work <laughs> it ended up obviously you know like staining all the fabric pieces so i tried the satin first it didn't work i was like oh hell no so i decided to hot glue all of it because the hot glue showed a lot less glue marks than yeah as you see <laughs> you see me reacting to it i'm like what what is going on right now so um yeah so hot glue shows a lot less glue marks for me um and it's easier to cover up when it does happen so anyway i'll um leave y'all here I'll leave you alone because the rest is self-explanatory and I'll come back when I have to explain something.
Okay, so like in this clip, you'll see here. Um, first, also, I forgot to tell y'all that I also like cut some fabric pieces to size if I need them in specific places to fill in. But anyway, um, also you see right now that I also use the canvas that I use for the Rox Roxana bodysuit um, on the hat. Now, I know you're like, well, Teja, that's not like a red tone because like that's the vibe you're going for. I know. So what I plan to do, because I needed more texture and more fabrics, so I decided to use the, the canvas fabric. What I'm going to do is paint the fabric of the canvas uh, once I glue everything down. And it'll be like really, really interesting. Like I mixed a whole bunch of colors together um, and painted that fabric. So that's what you're, what you're seeing right now. That's what's going on. All right, so now I flipped it to the bottom and I'm already securing all of the uh, fabrics that went over the edge of the top of the hat. Um, and yeah, and now I'm moving on to the bottom and doing the same thing. You'll see a lot more canvas pieces there because again, I was running out of fabric. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna repeat that process and then there's literally like two more steps and then I'll be done with the entire hat.
So here, um, done with the top of the hat. And so now you see me um, just painting all the canvas, canvas fabric pieces. Like I said, I mixed a whole bunch of colors together and ended up like being almost like the exact same color as the lining fabric, which was hilarious to me. I was trying to create like a different color. Um, but it was just working against me. It was just not in my favor. So, but it still turned out fine. Um, and I like how it kind of gave it more of an artsy look too, with a little bit of the painted fabric as well. Um, so that was nice. So anyway, after I paint the fabric, I end up putting some rhinestones in places, um, very randomly and very sparsely just to add a little bit of sparkle since there was a little bit of sparkle throughout the entire outfit. Um, and I figured that this would work well and also to cover up some glue spots that just kind of got out of hand as well um and yeah so after i do that part oh and i use rhinestones from uh rhinestone in the cape and the bodysuit too like just leftover rhinestones that i had that like kind of like mixed together um mostly red though but yeah after our rhinestone put the rhinestones down like the hat is literally done So this is how the hat came out. I think this was the, other than the boots, the most like nerve wracking piece that I had to do for this outfit because I had no idea how to make the hat and I had no idea what it was going to look like because I had one idea and I completely scrapped it other than the size of the hat. Um, and I decided to do this instead. <laughs> I decided to do this instead and I'm just happy with the way it came out now I am nervous about the way it will be cohesive with the rest of the outfit because it is very loud and very out there but y'all will see that in the next video of how everything came out so please stay tuned for that but yes this is the fabulousness of the hat Alright, so that's how I made the hat. I love the way it came out. You know, it kind of took on a life of its own and it kind of did its own thing and kind of manifested what it wanted to be in this world. But I appreciate it and I think it adds so much flair to the outfit. It is huge. I can't believe I wanted it bigger because that hat is, it's, it's, it's literally huge. <laughs> so, um, but I'm happy with the way it came out. Um, hopefully, I'm praying that everything matches. Cause I haven't tried on everything yet. Cause what, how you see things in your mind doesn't necessarily translate good, like in real life. So I'm going to do a fit check tomorrow. I won't film it. I don't think, but I'll be doing a fit check, uh, just to make sure that everything looks good and fits good. But I'm praying that everything matches. Cause like, it looks good on the rack uh, It's over there. It looks good on the rack, but I just, I don't know if it's going to match. <laughs> so pray for me y'all so anyway that is it for this video as always everything will be linked down below for materials um and any sources you need and also patreon sign up for it to get extra perks extra tutorials and digital sewing patterns as well and have a, access to the library of digital sewing patterns i have drafted and graded myself so anyway that's pretty much it for this video so y'all stay tuned because next video is either the get ready with me to do the photo shoot or the final look. So just be prepared because next video is that time. So um, please subscribe, turn on your post notifications so you know when that video comes out so you can finally see the completed look of this Beyonce Renaissance inspired uh, fashion project. I always forget that part. Fashion project. Um, so that you can see the whole look because I'm very, very excited. <laughs> so anyway, that is it, lovelies, for this video. So as always, please love yourself and I will see you next video. Mwah!